This is the Entrepreneur Unleashed Show, episode 80 with Dana Corey. Hi, I'm Patty Keating, and I believe entrepreneurs are the future of the world. Over the past two decades, I've built four businesses in alignment with my values, giving me the freedom to live where I want and do what I love. I'm here to tell you that creating your successful business does not require struggle or sacrifice. So how do you create the lifestyle business you love doing only what you love? Welcome to the Entrepreneur Unleashed podcast. I am so excited to bring you Dana Corey today. She's a business strategist and a coach. She combines nuts and bolts strategy, internal operating system neuro rewiring, not just wiring, and a walk behind you partnership to help established entrepreneurs make more money while working less hours and fully integrate their identity as the CEO leader of their company. Dana, hello. Hey, Patty. So good to have you here. It's so good to see your face. <laughs> Let's look forward to this. So, Let's just dive in. Is there anything you want to elaborate on um, in your just um, introduction? Um, yeah, not not really. You know, it really does say it all. I I I work with business owners, mostly established business owners, to grow their business. That's awesome. So, what inspired you to start your business? Um, Honestly, when I first went into business, so when I was 27, I promised myself I would never work for anybody else ever again. And then I had a family and I moved across the country and homeschooled my kids and realized that I needed to get away from my children. Uh, So I started a business Mm. in direct sales a long time ago. But when I was done, so that was, you know, I did 15 years in a couple of different companies and I really loved it, but I got really bored and I wasn't really sure where to go from there. I was kind of floundering. And when I came to watch you speak, you are like the impetus for my business being alive because I came to see you. I hadn't seen you in a long time. We'd been friends. We'd been connected for a while and I came to hear you speak and you came over and you were like, I've been seeing you on Facebook kind of floundering around. I know you're looking for something new. Let's talk. I'm like, okay. So you're the one who first said to me, you should be a coach. Like you're good at that. You're great at that. You should be a coach. And I remember thinking, and I think I said this to you out loud, like, that's a great idea, but how do you make money doing that? (laughs) I do remember that conversation. And I remember the look on your face like, like what? But also... Hey, maybe. <laughs> maybe. And that was a little bit more than seven years ago. Is that what it was? Awesome. Uh, and you kind of taught me the basics of how to have a coaching practice. Yeah. And since then, of course, life evolves, business evolves. And so here I am seven years later. That's awesome. So let's talk about that. What kind of obstacles showed up for you once you said, I'm in, I'm going to become a coach? Oh, first is like, how do you even make money doing that? <laughs> yeah. Right? Like I, I had absolutely no idea mm-hmm. how, what an offer was. I didn't know what, you know, I even, I remember, I didn't even know what kind of coach I should be. I had been selling romance products for five years or seven years before that. And so I had a really big audience of women specifically, mm-hmm. and I'd been coaching them like in their relationship, in their bedroom. So I thought, well, maybe I could be a relationship coach, but I'd also helped like over 250 women start businesses and business right. people, remember? And so right. then I was like, well, maybe I should be a business coach. Right. And I remember at the very beginning, I thought, oh, I'll be a relationship coach because there's less competition there. <laughs> and what did you discover? <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter what kind of coach you are, there's competition everywhere. <laughs> so I know uh, that was one of the first things. And then the second thing I noticed was that um, just in the process of having coaching conversations with people, as I was kind of learning what I brought to the table, right? That we were ta- that first of all, my clients were all business owners. Mm-hmm. Like I attracted business owners. That's mm-hmm. who showed up in my life. That's a good clue. 
that was a great clue. <laughs> and then the second clue was we'd be talking about relationships because they'd hired me in their relationships, but then we'd be like really getting into business. And that was way sexier for me. Yeah. Like, that's what my, my passion is business. I love business. Yeah. Right. And that's an important, such an important point that you're making because a lot of times people come into a coaching business or any kind of business thinking that there's a way that they have to do it and looking for the way that they have to do it and that the way that they get to do it is the way that fuels them and that like, it, but it takes sometimes a little bit of um, trial and error, error to figure that out um, in many cases. So <laughs> yeah, don't. totally. And you know, I went, I, so I, I, that dawned on me about four months in mm -hmm. and I started pivot. I pivoted. My first pivot was, okay, well, I don't want to be a relationship coach, but business is based on relationships. Let's talk about relationships in business. Nice. Right. So that was the first pivot that I made. And I did that for actually a couple of years yeah. um, and really talked about how the basis of all business is relationships and how to bring compassion and, relationships back into business yes um in a way that serve people right but then i noticed i've had i have had personally so much i've lived inside an entrepreneurial family right my dad was an entrepreneur my grandfather was an entrepreneur i've been surrounded by business since i was born yeah. and i just had this inherent like i know business. I understand how business works. Yeah. Because it's what we talked about at the dinner table all the time. <laughs> Perfect. And, and there's so much more to making more money and to having a business that allows you to have a life, not just you are your business, than about the relationships, right? You have to, you get into the infrastructure and you have to get into this and you have to get into that. And so I found that it, it was of a, a much more service to my clients Mm -hmm. if we addressed the whole picture instead of one piece of the yes. picture. So what do you, what do you, what would you say the main lesson was that you learned from the time you said, maybe I should be a coach until you finally realized, you know, it's the whole picture of business. It's not just the relationship piece. It's all of it. What was that lesson for you? I got, there's so many lessons, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, the lesson. So I would say that, that one yeah, one of the really big lessons was to be open to n n being open to the fact that I didn't know. Yeah. And that anything could show up in the space of not knowing and opportunities would show up. Uh -huh. But if I believed that I knew how it should be done, mm -hmm. and if I believed that this was the only way I could do it. Yeah. That I would be at, at that stage in my business, yeah. that I would be closing off doors without even knowing they were there. Exactly. That's a great lesson. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not an easy one to learn. And it's <laughs> one still, I mean, seven years in and many dollars later, mm -hmm. it's still one that I have to remind myself, oh, you don't know everything, girl. Like, you don't know how it should be. You yeah. can't say that this is the only way. Yeah. Like, open your blinders. Exactly. And you know, as entrepreneurs, it takes a personality type that is willing to get in and figure it out and do it. And then as we evolve, there comes that point where you're wait, like, wait a minute, I'm not going to grow past this certain level unless I actually open up and let other people like delegate and build these relationships and listen to things that I maybe didn't consider before. And it's kind of a big deal to like break through that part. Yeah. I actually also think that's really important to be willing to listen to other people's point of view and perspective yeah. and give them permission to give them, to give you their feedback. Yeah. Cause you can only see what you can see. Right. And so, like, for instance, if I hadn't asked you, well, I don't know how to do this. Will you show me how to do this? I wouldn't have known. And over the years, you and I, you know, we come together and we, then we don't see each other for a long time. And then we come together and always it's like, okay, so what do you think? What am I missing here? <laughs> right? What am I not seeing that I should be seeing? Yeah, exactly. um, 
And with, without that kind of input, I'm just stuck in my own little bubble. Or you're, yeah. we all are. Because yeah, we all are. That's what being human is, right? Yeah, we, we need so that. being willing to open that bubble is really important. Yeah, that's awesome. So what are you passionate about right now with your business? Um, you know, with the pandemic and all of that, the yeah. thing that, that uh, has really been fueling me is how to create and maintain relationships without leaving your house. Um, it's interesting that that relationship piece came back in again. Like that's so um, intricate to you, who you are, and it kind of just came right back in. And it's, it's, and it's always been learn. there. Yeah, yeah, right. It's always been part of everything that I do, right? Yeah. But it's how, I mean, it's how I grow my network. It's how I stay connected. Both, it's funny how, how connected I am to others mm -hmm. reflects back to how connected I am with me yeah. and how connected I am with my business, right? Yeah. And so, so much of how I meet new potential clients, how I meet colleagues, how all of that has always been in person for me or speaking on a stage or yeah. <laughs> right, being out in a public place. And now I am home. Yeah. Um, and really like super fairly really strict about being home because I'm not getting sick yeah um, <laughs> and so it's that's been fascinating and using the technology to help mm -hmm. right setting up my backyard so I can actually have somebody come over and we can have coffee or you know a glass of wine and still be in person talking to each other yeah. Um, reaching out to people all over the world. Like that's really actually what I'm passionate about right now. That's cool. So what would you say your vision is for say, let's say your next five years in business? Well, I'm of it. I just turned 60 this year mm -hmm. and you know, I've really started to recognize how hard I've worked over the seven years to get me to where I am right now. Yeah. And what for me has always been, I've always taken this to heart because we worked on values that have I've done worked on values with you actually in the past. Yeah. And those values are still my values, freedom, fun, yeah. right? Personal growth, mm -hmm. uh, integrity and connection. And freedom is above all else. The most important thing. Yeah. And so for me, I'm all about how can I continue? I don't need to have a million dollar business. I don't even need to have a three quarters of a million dollar business. Mm -hmm. I just want to continue to have the business I have with clients that really matter to me and be able to have the life that I've worked so hard to have. Nice. That's what, that's where I'm like, my vision is I get what's enough for me. It may not be enough for everybody else, but it's certainly enough for me. doesn't matter about everybody else. Nope. It's your vision. <clears throat> okay, what's the best advice you ever received? Um, try, everything you try, try it for at least three months before you make a good mm, Nice. Because there's no way to evaluate whether something's working or not until you've done it for three months. Nice. That's great. And what about personal growth? What would you say your personal growth has been as you've gone through this journey of growing your coaching business? Well, I'm going to say that I don't actually think they're separate. <laughs> I, agree. <laughs> I think they're completely attacked and that for entrepreneurs as human beings, everybody has a path that they choose to get to be a better version of themselves. Mm -hmm. And people who choose entrepreneurship or business ownership are actually choosing a pathway that growing the business itself is the personal growth journey. Yeah. Not and person. you know, from years of working with people, what's really clear and it gets clearer every day is that your business is a reflection of how, how much you're willing to grow yourself and your, your business can only grow inside the container of you. Mm -hmm. And so what I found is that I, keep having to let go of old stories, mm -hmm. have to keep showing up as a better version of myself, have to keep confronting the places where 
my patterns are like not useful, yeah. or, right? All through the commitment to grow or to be the best coach that I could be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do a lot of reading. I do, I go to conferences for me, not actually, if it, if it doesn't resonate for me, then it's not worth going because it's about oh, personal awesome. growth, right? So what about, so, oh, sorry, did I interrupt you? Nope. Okay, what about tools and resources? What gadgets or tools do you use to make your life easier? Oh, without a doubt, a scheduler. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will use Calendly or Acuity. I, I use something called Vcita, V-C-I-T-A dot com, and it's hugely robust. Yeah. And it is a CRM and a scheduler, but that one tool, yeah. I cannot live without that. You guys will put that in the link in the show notes, just so you know. Yeah, it's awesome. I love my scheduler. <laughs> um, That's nice. Other tools, Zoom right now. Right? I, like, I couldn't live without Zoom. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, what, about, my phone. what about books, podcasts, blogs? What are you reading? What are you listening okay. to? Okay. So the book I tell many, many, so I, I have a few books that I give us homework for my clients depending mm -hmm. on like where they are in their journey and what they have so if you have a business partner the best book ever is called rocket fuel by gino wickman and renee bower um, it is such a good book and it really describes how to communicate with a partner how to grow a business with a partner so that yeah. it works right um uh profit first mm -hmm. Right, so I, we delve really into numbers, and it's the it's like the envelope system for your business. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm a, I'm not a podcast reader mostly because I work out of my house, and so I, I I'm never driving to listen to anything. Yeah, and I can't talk on the phone and listen to a podcast, so right. I don't <laughs> listen to podcasts. But I read a lot of books, um, and my favorite conference that I like, I picked a conference a year five years ago to be the conference because you know when you attend conferences or whatever it takes a, year, a couple of years to get to know the community to feel like you're part of them so it's a multi-year commitment so the conference i love is dentthefuture.com and um they are i love them i they're always looking to expand their brain and our brains and we talk to scientists and we talk to artists and talk to high-tech entrepreneurs and MIT and Harvard grads and deep sea divers and yeah, yeah. Is looking at the world from a different lens and what you bring back to your business. Now. That's very good. in the show notes too, guys. Um, okay, so looking back, if you were to do this all over again, what would you tell your younger self? Trust. Trust. <laughs> Trust and the process. Just yeah. keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just trust yourself that it's going to work out. Yeah. Um, and if it, you know, if you, the other piece of that too, I think I would tell myself is just because it's hard doesn't mean it's a failure. Mm -hmm. Just because it didn't work out the way you thought it was, that's a lesson yeah. to take on. Yeah. Um, so trust yourself. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Dana. I really appreciate it. It's so good to connect with you. It's so good. To, thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm recording this episode from my home office during self-quarantine as we were all asked to stay home due to the coronavirus. If you like what you hear and you'd like to hear more, please join me in my Facebook group. It's called The Unleashed Entrepreneurs. You can search that on Facebook. Come on over. It's a community of thriving entrepreneurs making a difference in the world, doing what they love and changing lives. Hope to see you there. Enjoy the show. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have you ever wondered what you could do to make your own business and grow it online? Head on over to pattykeating.com and take the entrepreneur code. You'll discover your unique value, your personality style, and how you can combine those two into a thriving business that helps people and lets you make money doing what you love. I'll see you there. Bye for now.